you know, you have a small daughter <laughs> who's 17 months old. And what were your experiences having rheumatoid arthritis and, you know, family planning, pregnancy? Yeah. Yeah. It was a really long journey yeah. that actually formally started with, and I'm going to do my little plug here, um, with this lovely book <laughs> by Susie Edward May. She's an Australian, so mm -hmm. I don't know if American audiences are going to even recognize this book, but um, it's called Arthritis, Pregnancy, and the P Path to Parenthood. Um, and I ordered it directly from the author. Um, oh. Gosh, like five years ago so mm -hmm. um well before we were ever really trying to conceive mm -hmm. um and i could not get through a single chapter without bawling my eyes out mm -hmm. because it spoke directly to so much of the um, emotional journey that the path to parenthood as someone with arthritis um is or, and was for mm -hmm. me with a lot of it just being a lot of fear and self-doubt about this is a genetic condition. Mm -hmm. Am I even making a responsible choice by wanting to have a biological child? Mm -hmm. What is going to happen to my body during? What is going to happen to my body uh, immediately after? Am I going to be able to physically parent my child? Like these yeah. huge unknowns um, and, and what that does to your psyche as someone, you know, who's once you know you get pregnant very hormonal yeah if you had prednisone gosh yes yeah. you're pregnant that prednisone and yeah really emotional prednisone I'm like this is the best day ever this is the worst day ever yeah, yeah. so yeah. it was um it was a very um intentional decision when we we mm -hmm. decided to try to conceive because of all these considerations that both my husband and i had been through these questions together about right. like what will happen if this what mm -hmm. will happen if that pregnancy itself was blissful after yeah. i got through my uh first trimester where i was weaning off medications that that was awful but once my uh immune system decided to cooperate it was heaven on earth yeah. <laughs> being yeah. pregnant was amazing and and from an emotional perspective for me as someone who had been combating my body mm -hmm. for nearly a decade mm -hmm. to have that my like faith in my own physical self right. restored that like right. you know what i, I am not same. yeah i am not broken look at me i'm big and bringing this human into the world, like I, it was so empowering for me. Even just getting pregnant, we got pregnant on the first try and I was like, what? Yeah. Like, my body doesn't usually cooperate. <laughs> like, I was honestly, that was my first thought. I was like, that's not right, that, that's not right because this is gonna be have to be a struggle. Like it has to be because everything else has been a struggle. But, yeah. 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 So just watching your body work is so powerful. Yeah, but I took nothing for granted either yes. because I was always, waiting for the other shoe to drop. And so I um, was very deliberate in um, laying out our birth plan as far as where I wanted to be physically mm -hmm. and who would be with us. So I found a, an amazing midwife and birth center mm -hmm. located really nearby our home. Um, a doula to work with uh, us during labor who was aware of my physical limitations and could right. help me make um, specific modifications to different mm -hmm. birthing positions that I like might not be able to do physically right. like uh, so it was it was and it went perfectly and my symptoms didn't return for at least I think it was four months after oh, she wow. was born and they they came back on slowly so that was good i was mm -hmm. you know ready for a you know hitting uh, being hit by a mac truck but that that never happened it was oh, it was a slow return of my symptoms and um it's been really great to work with my rheumatologist to um continue to treat my ra while still achieving my um, goals for breastfeeding mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. um, and planning future pregnancies. Yeah. <laughs> so was that hard with medications? I've heard that there's a lot of confusion around 
which medications you can be on while breastfeeding. We were able to talk about Simsia, which is what, mm. I'm, what I'm on now and what the um, research shows relative to the size of the molecule and, mm -hmm. um, and how it might be passed through breast milk and digested and we feel comfortable um, right. continuing. And we, um, I've shared this information, of course, with Edie's pediatrician mm -hmm. and so everybody's in on it and everybody's okay with it agreeing mm -hmm. that any risks which there are none that we can point to but are far outweighed by um, the benefits the physical challenges now as she gets older are increasing yeah. so we're working on that a bit but what's great as she gets heavier and more wily um, she also understands language more and yeah. can be uh, counted on to cooperate a bit. <laughs> a bit more. Yeah, as I was say, I remember 18 months being about the peak of the difficulty for me in terms of that, like they they're don't quite have any self-control yet and the language is still emerging. So, but by 24 months, they oftentimes can, you know, I don't follow directions a little bit. Maybe yeah. I'm optimistic, but yeah, yeah. So you're right. <laughs> not always. Of... There's definitely not an always yeah. with a toddler, but no. but yeah. So we're we're right in that transition where she's too big for me to uh, physically force her to do anything. She's stronger than me in a lot of ways, um, right. but she's she understands, I think, to some extent that she needs to help me oh, with certain yeah. things. Like yeah. I mean, of course, not like deeply understanding that, but. You know, she, for example, when changing her diaper now, she understands the routine that she's going to come lay down in front of me on the floor. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't even ask her. She, wow. uh, If she sees me sit down with the diaper, she shuffles over and lays down. So do you, um, like, do you ever struggle with fears about the future like as she's getting bigger or are you more like living in the moment because that was one of my hard things was like I'd be like what am I going to do when this happens and what am I going to do yeah I those are the, the thoughts that come when you're lying in bed at night yeah 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 <laughs> uh, and they definitely do um but I'm trying not to focus on them as much yeah. because every sign that I have right now is pointing towards those fear is not coming to pass mm. because she is such a dear soul right she's now. She's so sweet. No, <laughs> she is amazing. Yeah. And so she will be forever and yeah, yeah. she will never be a teenager mm -hmm. and yeah. <laughs> she will be, you know, a blissful child her whole life. Yeah. Well, no, my, my therapist helped me a lot with that because she, she helped show me that like I have all this energy devoted to all these future worries but like in the reality only one of those is even going to happen and it's probably not even the one that like I'm thinking about so it's a lot of wasted <laughs> yeah energy <laughs> anything else you want to share with maybe p audience members all my audience members who don't, don't exist currently but um, <laughs> about you know um advice for people who might be on the fence about whether or not to have a child or um, people who are pregnant who are like, oh my gosh, people with rheumatoid arthritis who are pregnant who are like, what's about to happen? Yeah, I mean, I would love to say, you know, it's all going to be fine, yeah. right? Because, But you can't. Yeah, no. And um, I don't think being Pollyanna about it helps anybody. But what I can say is whatever it is, you can get through it. Mm -hmm. And it rarely is as bad as you think it's going to be. And it'll be, the, the things that are bad will be different than things than, totally. you, than you thought. So yeah, don't spend time worrying about the future. Relish in the moment you have now. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, don't let fear guide your decision making. Right. If, if you have medical reasons that you can't pursue um, a, having a biological child, yes. there's all I'm sorts of alternatives, yeah. um, ways to have a family. Or yeah. And not having a family is perfectly fine too. I know a lot of people, or there's a societal yeah. or family pressure yes. that a, a successful adult life looks one way, but it doesn't. And just so, I, that's what I would say to people is, you know, make sure the decisions you're making are for your happiness, not for your fear, and not for anybody else. That's, that is so great. And, you know, family, the word family, 
you know, you used to look a certain way to me. You know, I always thought it would be I'd have two kids and I would have a certain, you know, and now as my my physical health has, has gone in directions I didn't really foresee, like I'm starting to think of family as different, you know, like that, you know, being an aunt is really important to me, you know, and, um, you know, being able to take care of, obviously take care of the child I have is is super important and maybe having pets and things that I and before again it doesn't it's not necessarily going to look the way that I originally planned it but it could be um, it could be j just as good you know long term